Dom here from Essential RC, thanks for tuning in for this video. We've been very busy recently travelling around shows and events and filming coverage of those, so it's nice to get back to uh, a project that I'm starting today. Got several projects on the go, but this is the first one I'm showing you today. This is an FMS Fox, three meter electric glider. It's been out for a while, uh, so ordered the kit. Really complete, it's amazing actually. It's it's really, in terms of completeness, it's up there near the top of all the models that I've reviewed, and I've reviewed many. This It's got everything installed in it. The servos are in it, they're already hooked up to the control surfaces. The speed controller, brushless motor, prop are already attached. You've literally just got to click this thing together, drop in your receiver, uh, set it up on your transmitter, and then charge up your flight battery. It's it's really that, that easy. It'll take minutes to put together, which is great because I want to put my effort into a few other things. The first of those is Head Tracked DJI FPV. We've done this to a few models already. Uh, so enjoying uh, FPV, F fixed wing FPV flying uh, at the moment, even more than line of sight flying. So Im immersive and a different style of flying. We've done it to Spitfires. We've done it to EDF jets. Uh, including A10 and Avanti, we've uh, done it, and the other guys have done it to multiplex gliders. So it's about time I put a, together a glider with head tracked uh, FPV. Now um, we uh, have had a lot of experience in this now, so we're selling a really well proven pan tilt gimbal on our eBay store, and are about to launch on the eBay store an actual head tracker, electronic head tracker as well, which you nobody makes at the moment. Uh, we use, um, have used the old Fat Shark external module, which isn't made anymore, very hard to get hold of. So we've decided to make our own and it works really, really well. So that will be available soon. Link for our eBay store is in the pinned comment and description. So of course, in terms of pan tilt, we've got three different options. Uh, this is the one in the uh, free wing Avanti. So you can see the DJI air unit is behind the pan tilt mechanism in this case. So we call this the flat uh, configuration on our eBay store. Pans and, uh, pans and tilts really nicely. Good way you've got, you want the overall install to be low uh, but you can accommodate the the length of that uh, foot that footprint for the pan tilt frame. We've got another one which we call the stack, where this air unit is below the pan tilt uh, mechanism, and that's good where you've got the 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 height, but you want it to be shorter. We've also got a pan only version, which uh, again is quite a compact one, and the other guys have used that on the wings of their multiplex. Uh, gliders. Also got the RC gauges real-time telemetry uh, display here which we've used in this uh, FPV Avanti cockpit. Works good in low light conditions and I think we showed that in one of our recent videos. Might well put that into the canopy of the Fox as well and this is the this is the canopy. Comes with the pilot pre-installed, a nice little uh, printed sticker for the uh, the gauges and what's also nice as well as you see under here this is how you take the you could take the pilot out and they give you a spare a spare one to mount your own camera on or something like that now a lot of people ask me why would you not put the DJI camera and pan tilt mechanism inside this cockpit the reason there are two main reasons one is that this uh, Although it may look quite clear on camera, it's not very. When you're out flying FPV, and if it was, the camera was in here, it does distort the view. It's not like glass, it's plastic, so it does distort the view. The other reason here is reflections and uh, the brightness of the sun, which can really obscure the view as well. So I had to think about it. You, you can see, just by looking through that, it does distort the view. So I'm going to go with the pan tilt mechanism on the wing and I think I am going to go for pan tilt this is quite low it's a big glider so it should sit on the wing quite nicely and not make too you know not create too much drag 
I don't think. So there's that. The other thing I've been learning recently is OpenTX. And this is the amazing Radio Master TX16S. Now the Max uh, over here in the UK costs about £200. And the non-bling regular TX16X uh, S costs just over 100 it's, a, it's an amazing low price for such a capable radio. You could buy one of these and never, never need another radio again in your, in your lifetime. Compared to other well-known premium brand makes which will you know, cost you anything between 500 and 1,000 pounds if not more for the same capabilities. The downside is learning OpenTX um, but if there are loads of videos out there. It's not, it is fairly intuitive and I'm learning. You can teach an old dog new tricks. So I really do recommend look at, looking this up if you are looking to you know, change your radio or move up from something quite basic. It really is, take my word for it, it's brilliant. And it's really solid, solid and well-designed radio. Next really interesting thing that I'm adding into this project is a flight controller. Now flight control is typically the domain of quads and drones, but there are a number of fixed wing flight controllers out there now. So this is the Matex SIS F765 wing. Now why would I use one of these? Uh, there are several reasons. The first one is uh, flight stabilization. So, you know, in bumpy, windy, turbulent conditions, it will iron that out for me. The, the other reason is um, I want full telemetry while I'm flying FPV. I want to know the amps I'm pulling. I want to know the remaining capacity in my flight battery. I've got GPS uh, module connected to this here. So that gives me uh, a bearing back to home and my distance uh, back home. Uh, I bought an airspeed sensor as well that I'm gonna solder into that flight controller so I get true airspeed as well. I thought that'd be quite interesting. But that, you know, there's lots more telemetry that you can configure to be displayed on screen, on the on-screen display in the DJI FPV goggles. The third reason, there are some really fantastic modes that you can take advantage of so for example, launch assist, which will make uh, launching uh, much easier in FPV mode. There is return to home. So it knows when you switch on the flight controller where your home base is after it's acquired the GPS satellites. So if I were to, for example, this is a possible scenario, although unlikely, you could lose the uh, the FPV feed to the goggles, it goes totally black, you can't see anything and when you take the goggles off you can't immediately see the, air, the RC aircraft, the glider, so just flick a switch and it will immediately go back to a predetermined height and put power on and return back home. The other one is when you're flying gliders it's sometimes nice to have a break, so you can put it into loiter mode and it will circle a predetermined height at a predetermined radius, which will be really useful as well. And those are just a small number of the different modes that you can take advantage of. So quite an involved project. So what I'm gonna show you next is how a, a summary really, a sense of how easy it is to put together the flight controller. So here it is, this is the Matek SIS F765 wing flight controller. So uh, when it arrives, it's certainly not like this. I've done quite a lot of work uh, with it already. Um, but basically it's a, it's a sandwich. So if I take the top cover off and the bottom, mostly protective cover as well, then I can show you very briefly what I've, what I've done. So the first thing you can see here is the uh, where I plug in the, the battery with my XT90. Speed controller will get soldered in here and here on either side of this capacitor that I've soldered in because I'm 
um, powering with 6S. Uh, Jason was telling me that a capacitor would be necessary. And then I, when you when you get it, you don't have these pins on here. You have to solder these in. So you get the pins with the flight controller on a long strip like that, and you cut out the number of pins that you need. So this is this is where my servos are going to be connected in that the flight controller will have uh, control over. But then what I've also got here is GPS. That's my GPS module that I bought separately. My Crossfire receiver, diversity receiver. And this is the connection for my DJI FPV camera and air unit. So I'm showing on the screen now a, a circuit diagram that you can look up, which makes it really easy for you to just to know where you're supposed to attach these different things. So if I flip over the flight controller, there is a bit of skill in soldering in the pins. Uh, it's something you learn very quickly. So you can see here I've put in the pins the, on the short side of the pins and you just what you do need to do first when you do that is use some uh, flux like this this is the the best stuff to use Jason recommended all these things to me he's very experienced at electronics but this is really good so you you put that on and you spread and you spread that around on the on the base and then you solder each of the pins onto the PCB. Soldering uh, iron is, is very important. So I've got here uh, this one. Runs off a LiPo. Again, I'll put the link to that and everything else into the, the description, the video description for you. Uh, and the other thing you have to master are these uh, DuPont connectors as well. So you've soldered the pins onto the flight controller, but then what you need to do is learn how to make up these plugs. So for example, if I pull off this one for the receiver, you need to, all you have are, are wires and you need to crimp them onto the pins and push them into a plug. And there's a real skill involved in, in doing that. And there are lots of videos out there for how to make up these DuPont connectors and learn how to do crimping as well. Well worth looking up a good video on that. So it's not, not too complicated. If you follow the circuit diagram, you're patient about soldering on the pins onto the flight controller, making up the DuPont connectors doesn't take too much time. It's going to be quick to put the FMS Fox together. So why not invest a little bit of effort in putting together one of these flight controllers? So the next thing I want to show is how you configure the software that goes onto this flight controller. And that's iNav that has all these amazing features to deliver telemetry. And these features such as loiter, launch control and return to home. Let's have a quick look at that. Okay, so this is my combined video editing gaming uh, setup, and uh, this is the 765 flight controller. You can see it's got a USB port on that side, so I plug in there. Now, what I've already done, I've already got the iNav configurator on this machine. So I now have config, so I just start that up. So the first thing you need to do with the flight controller is flash the firmware onto it. So we would use the firmware flasher. We would choose the uh, Matex 765 and version 3 has just come out and then we would um, load the firmware online and then it would enable this button here to flash the firmware and that would load version 3 of iNav onto the 
765 flight controller but I've already done that I've already set up most of the settings <clears throat> so now that we've done that I've done that I can just connect so you can see it's connected it's uh, picking up uh, the movement of the flight controller and we've got all of our options down the left so the first thing we would need to do is to calibrate it that's a, a sequence we go through different orientations uh, very easy to do we've got mixer so we can tell it what type of uh, platform we've installed the flight controller into we've got mixer presets but we're basically telling it about the motor and what servos Ports is where we set up um, some of the sensors and peripherals. So for example, we've got GPS there on UR2 and we've got the DJI FPV VTX peripheral on UR3. Configuration, there are a few things we would need to set up here. So for example, turning on GPS because I have uh, added on that GPS module and telemetry output enabling that and the OLED screen display as well on this receiver tab we would be able to see the movement on the different channels if I had the uh, transmitter bound to the receiver now it gets interesting because on modes we can enable or decide how we enable the different features of the flight controller so for example arming you can see I've got set on channel 5 nav launch I've got on channel 6 but you have many other options as well so for loiter for example heading hold nav uh, uh, altitude hold and things like that GPS is turned on so if we were outside and it could pick up satellites then it would give us our GPS location OSD is a really really good one where you can set up the uh, where the telemetry is displayed on the screen so all your various options are here so we've got example signal strength so you can see that is at the top right as I hover over it you can see it highlights that line here we've got lots of other other things we'd be interested in as well Bolt, uh, battery overall battery voltage uh, individual cell voltage battery remaining uh, percentage and if I scroll down there are a few others like altitude for example uh, we're displaying an artificial horizon horizon sidebars the pitch angle and roll angle the current draw and the milliamp hours drawn in capacity the number of GPS satellites our direction home and our distance to home so lots of brilliant information we can get on the on-screen display in our goggles while we're flying so that's it for this quick intro to this 3 meter FMS Fox project that I'm working on in the second part of uh, the second video that I'm going to do we'll show it down the flying field and flying for the first time so thanks for tuning in for this quick intro if you've enjoyed our videos, then please click on subscribe. You might want to give us a thumbs up and you should click on the bell icon for notifications of our future uploads and live streams. But thanks for watching this one. See you next time.